This is your Star Wars Comic Canon update for the month of December 2016, where I take all the Comic Canon that was released for that month and I share it with you so you can stay up to date. In the month of December, we saw the release of a new series, Dr. Aphra, and we actually got two issues of that. We also saw the release of Poe Dameron issue number nine. So I'm going to start by talking about Dr. Aphra's two issues, and then I will end with Poe Dameron. If you haven't read the Darth Vader comic series, Dr. Aphra was an archaeologist who worked for Darth Vader after the events of A New Hope. She did missions for and with him for some time, along with her homicidal droids Triple Zero and BT, before she betrayed Vader and was executed by him. Well, Vader thought he had executed her, but she survived. So this series so far is Dr. Aphra back to locating rare artifacts with a Wookiee she owes a lot of money to, and her homicidal droids. In the first issue, Aphra is in the Outer Rim searching for artifacts. When she is double-crossed by a man helping her, she survives his treachery and reappears after he grabs the artifact to kill him and take it for herself. When she returns to her droids, it turns out they had a bet whether she would make it back alive. Because though they love working for her and the awful things they get to do with her, they also want to see her dead. It's a very interesting relationship dynamic. Aphra admits it is odd to be dealing in artifacts of cultural importance instead of recovering ones that can kill people, which is her specialty. She goes to meet her Wookiee friend, Kier Santan, on her new Archangel 2 ship when she runs into So Tath, who represents an organization she owes a lot of money to. She tells Triple Zero to go get the Wookiee while she tries to deal with the leader and get him to let her go so she can sell her artifact and then pay back the organization. He tells her to hand it over and they will sell it themselves. Luckily, her Wookiee friend shows up as they begin to get violent and she makes a bet with the man, her Wookiee against his two thugs. If the Wookiee loses, she pays double the payment. If her Wookiee wins, she gets to leave and she comes back to do the next payment. She agrees and the bounty hunter Wookiee quickly takes them out in a matter of seconds. The man lets her go but threatens to tell the Imperials she is still alive and where she is if she doesn't come back to make her next payment. Problem is, Triple Zero doesn't like the man threatening his master, someone he is actually enjoying spending time with at the moment. He follows the man and when he's alone, he uses a neurotoxin on him to make it look like he died of heart failure. He tells the dying man he hopes his replacement has better manners and leaves him to die, regretting he couldn't make it more painful. BT is also regretful that he can't light the man on fire because spontaneous human combustion sadly isn't a thing. Triple Zero and BT meet back up with Aphra and the Wookiee and they go to sell her artifact. Unfortunately, she discovers her doctorate has been suspended, which means the association is unable to verify any of her finds. The comic ends with Aphra's father showing up to inform her he got her doctorate suspended and wants her to find spiritual salvation. This comic also has a mini story of Aphra in graduate school at the University of Barleth years ago while working on her doctorate. And she's a real asshole to her supervisor, the Sava, whose approval she needs to complete her doctorate. When her friend questions this, Aphra explains that she's going to make a discovery in a vault she found on a planet that will practically force him to approve her doctorate or be mocked. But unfortunately, her big discovery turns out to be nothing. There's nothing in the vault. When she admits this to him, he shows her a room containing Aberson symbiotes creatures that are beyond quarantine and supposed to be destroyed the instant they are found. Sava explains she was never meant for archaeology, and he selected her for doctoral supervision because he never wanted someone like her to become a doctor. He was going to make sure she was never approved. He also informs her the old Sava was thrown out because of him. Aphra runs from the room and contacts her old friend Sana, who is likely the woman we see later in the Star Wars comics that has a love-hate relationship with Aphra. With her friend's help, Aphra moves the creatures to the vault on the planet she originally was hoping to discover a big find in. When Aphra reports on finding these creatures in the vault, this is considered the biggest find in centuries. The Sava confronts Aphra and she informs him that if he tells, she'll make sure it gets out he was keeping the creatures. The comic ends with her school friend saying she's going to devote her career to finding out why the creatures were on that planet. Aphra allows her friend to do so, not caring she's going to waste her life doing so. So continuing on to issue number two, we begin with a flashback to 18 years ago with Aphra at her father's home, lighting fires. When her father comes home to see this, she tells her father that the Imperials dropped her off 
and that her mother was dead in a ditch on the alien world she took them to when she left Afra's dad for being obsessed by old dumb stuff. As he tries to put out the fire, she tells him, fair warning, the psychologist said I may have some issues. In present day, she yells at her father, asking him what he did. He explains he leaked information on her placing the creatures on the planet, which there are hundreds of academics still working on finding an explanation for their presence, and that he needs her help with the Ordu Aspectu, people he's been trying to find his entire life. Afra takes him back to her ship, where she threatens her father and tells him to give her all the information he has on what she did. He claims that she wouldn't hurt him, and she agrees, allowing Triple Zero to step up to the plate to get the information. And Triple Zero is so adorable as he brings out all sorts of torture devices while saying, Oh me, oh my. Hello, I'm Triple Zero, and it seems your daughter is a genuinely horrible person. You must be very proud. But it turns out Afra has a heart and stops him. Afterwards, when Afra's companions want to know who the Ordu Aspectu are, her father and her have very different stories they tell them. Her father believes they were people that lived in the Fortress of Garn, that believed life was sacred, and fought evil Jedi with blue sabers who refused to allow them to reach eternal life or eternity. But they eventually manage to ascend. Her father wants to bring them back to cause a spiritual renaissance, an awakening of the Force. Afra believes it's more likely that those people were evil, and what looks like Siths in her flashback, and they were killing Padawans to create eternal life. It was the good Jedis with the blue sabers that were trying to stop them. Afra warns him to think about if they find them and she's right. They're monsters and what that could mean. He convinces her to help by saying that if they are, that means they have a powerful weapon. And isn't that her thing? However, he doesn't trust his daughter, rightfully, and feeds her information on finding them pieces at a time. The comic ends with them first going to a forest moon, Yavin 4, where surprise, there are Imperials. So besides this series being an absolute delight, and I don't care what anyone says, I love Triple Zero and BT. Did you just torture tease me? Besides all that, what has me really excited is the Ordu Expectu and also learning more about Yavin 4. The ancient Jedi Order that may or may not have been the precursor to Sis, I don't know, is just so tantalizing. There isn't too much, there is a little bit, but there's not a lot of backstory yet to Sis or more of the ancient history that was kind of just washed away when Disney came in and I say rebooted the canon because that's how it feels to me but some people get a little bitchy when I use that term but the fact that we are going more into that ancient history and we're learning more about these Jedi groups or these conflicting groups to me is just so cool. And I want to believe that these are Siths because we know how much they love their immortality and the shit they would mess around with in the old canon to try to get to it or achieve it. But then part of me wants it to actually just be a fairy tale or some mixture of truth between Aphra and Aphra's father's version. And I guess I will end talking about Dr. Aphra issue number one and two by saying I do find it surprising that we are creating this kind of new canon in Star Wars and this is the series they're choosing to put it in because to me what they just revealed in this issue is a big deal, at least to me. And it's surprising because there were other series that came and they're ended now that I thought they would do something like this, add in a lot more heavy canon, and they didn't. So having a character like Dr. Aphra, which isn't, you know, when you think of Star Wars, you don't think Dr. Aphra, at least I don't. And then having her series adding this kind of weight to Star Wars canon is just... Really surprising, but awesome at the same time. All right, enough gushing about Dr. Afra. Now let's talk about Poe Dameron issue number nine, and here's a refresher just in case you're not up to date or you forgot or whatnot. It is a time of uncertainty in the galaxy. Standing against the oppression of the First Order is General Organa's resistance, including Poe Dameron and his team of ace pilots, Black Squadron. Black Squadron has undertaken a mission to find the explorer Lor Senteca, and a new enemy has emerged, Tyrix, an officer of the First Order Security Bureau. Though Poe's crew of pilots has managed to survive multiple encounters, Tyrix has vowed to destroy them. Meanwhile, the droid C-3PO has approached Poe with an urgent undertaking, 
to retrieve information and rescue a droid operative on the planet Kadok. But what they don't know is Tyrix is also on this planet. So on the planet, Poe asks C-3PO where the missing spy droid is. C-3PO doesn't know, but has been in contact with another spy to try to find him. Poe wants them to keep a low profile, and when a man is thrown off a building for seemingly doing nothing, it further demonstrates his point. They're currently in a very bad place. Meanwhile, Tyrix is walking through the streets, and some children think he's an easy mark. They try to steal from him, but Tyrix catches them. A woman begs for one of the children's lives, saying they didn't know he was Lord Tyrix. Lord Tyrix gives the kid some money and says now he does. Tyrix walks into what appears to be his favorite bar, where people greet him respectfully, but seem a bit shocked. And then we get a lovely flashback of decades earlier. Korlak, the Imperial that helped Poe adjust after the Empire lost against the Rebellion, takes Tyrix to meet two women named Wenda and Bet, who are going to help them bring back the Empire. Before the Empire collapsed, Tyrix was stationed on a shipyard. If Tyrix can help them repair the ships left there, and a good number of Imperial ships were left there in all sizes, they can get word out to the Empire loyalists and bring the Empire back. Tyrix, super excited, agrees to help. We see him successfully get to the shipyard with Wenda, Bet, Korlak, and a man named Whisper. In present time, Poe is in a seedy bar and trying to keep C-3PO safe while he finds his droid operative. He meets up with another droid he has rolling around the city's taverns all day to collect information, and BB-8 downloads his data banks. After getting the information, they learn the droid is being held by the Ranks, a dangerous group of people. Meanwhile, Tyrix is at his favorite table when the man named Whisper comes to him, saying he didn't believe the rumors that Tyrix is back. Tyrix tells him that he's taking back the ranks from him, and apparently Whisper's men agree because they kill their current leader and welcome Lord Tyrix back very quickly. Just Poe's luck, he shows up at the base of the ranks, and the man at the front desk confirms he's Poe right before shooting him. Best parts of this issue by far was Poe talking to C-3PO about how the droid had been a part of every big event in the Galactic War, and also C-3PO wishing that Han Solo, his old friend, was there to help him. Oh, and I guess seeing the embers of groups forming to try to resurrect the Empire or doing it in the Empire's image is also pretty neat, I would say. I also really want to see Tyrix go from his flashback self, which is a little more idealistic, kind of gung-ho type of person, perhaps a little bit more naive, to the total cold badass we see in present day. Okay, so that is your Star Wars canon for the month of December 2016. Please like this video, subscribe, and come back for more Star Wars videos and more Star Wars canon. Make sure you let the hate flow through you.